I start seeing guys like all of them are the same. This is what is in their mind. They don't care if you want sex or not. They'll just take it whenever they like it. A 2010 survey on sexual harassment in Nigerian tertiary institutions revealed that 69% of the female respondents had been sexually harassed. The study identified male classmates and lecturers as the main perpetrators. The harassment also covers incidents like compelling someone to give hugs against their consent, unwanted touching, stroking, body groping, derogatory language and or comment about sexual part of the body, sex-specific derogatory names or slut shaming. It could also involve unwanted display or discussion of pornography and display of sexual pictures, videos, cartoons or sexual jokes. Sexual harassment along with other forms of gender-based violence like rape, infliction of body injuries and more are ways through which the bodily integrity of female undergraduates in Nigeria is violated. Rachel, a 300-level student of mass communication at the University of Jos, was molested by her nephew when she was 7 years old. She wanted to speak out on her experience but the offender threatened her into silence. This has affected her relationship with her father and her elder brother. There was this fateful day that every, nobody was in the house, it was just me and the guy. My, we usually call her mom. My mom okay. went, went to church, her husband went out and was just us. I didn't even know where my brother and the other kids went to. It was just the two of us. And I was in my room. It was the rooms where two, the boys sleep in a different room and then the ladies in a different room. I was in the ladies' room when he came in, started approaching me. He came close. He was, he was speaking. He was saying some stuff that I didn't understand. I was, I was seven. Okay. Yes. So he he held me like he was trying to romance me or something, you get. So I was telling him no, he should stop and he refused. And then before I knew it he threw my skirt up and then he started putting his fingers into my private part and then I was telling him no, I was begging him to stop, but he couldn't. And then, that was the first day, that was the only thing he did the first day. Before someone, we had someone outside, then he stopped, he went out. And just when I wanted to go out, the person left, he came back inside and told me not to tell anyone. And I kept quiet, thinking that was it, he wouldn't come again. There was this day again, everybody went out. He still did the same thing. He repeated the same thing. And then a third time, the third time he even tried to put his own private part into mine. That was the third time. And he did it not once, not twice, almost five times like that before we left. I wanted to tell my brother. Okay. Then anytime I want to tell him, I would feel like he wouldn't even believe me. So I kept it to myself and because of the warning he gave me. Rachel also narrated how Benga raped her when she was in 300 level. She says Benga appeared friendly and easy to trust at first. And he presented himself like a friend who is caring, somebody who, who likes you, somebody who wants the best for you. So I trusted him. He, he does business, so if we, if we have money in our accounts and want to withdraw and we don't feel like going to the ATM or something, we we'll transfer the money to him and he will give us the cash. That's what we do. So there was this day my dad sent money to me and we needed the money urgently because we wanted to cook. So he came to the house fortunately and we were like, okay, thank God you came. Yes, uh, 
we want to transfer money to your account that you give us how much i said four thousand okay that he don't have the money here but it's okay fine i'll transfer i'll come we'll come and get the money maybe later he was like okay fine so that day he was even alone the guys that used to be in his company i think all of them must have went out to something so he was the only person in the compound and he i was he said he offered me a drink i collected it and i was sitting down we were just in then started coming closer then started feeling so uncomfortable i started sensing it i just i was just looking at him i hope this guy is not going to do anything funny here he was trying to kiss me and then i tried pushing him he kissed me and then i asked him to stop no i don't like this kind of thing it might lead to something that i might not like he insisted and before i knew it he held my hands together he started kissing me so hard i was like benga stop i don't like it and he refused he just ignored me like nobody was talking to him i was begging him i was i started crying when i started crying he stopped he looked at me he looked at me i was thinking he was going to stop but he didn't he made sure he did what he came to do he forced himself on me he basically raped, raped me she explains why she could not report to the police and the school management i don't know of any policy that has to do with the rape case cases of rape or assault or anything that's why i didn't report to the school i'm not sure i would have reported to the school even if i knew because i was doubting that even if i tell them they would be like it happened outside school i went out of the school and it happened Rachel Fonda explains the traumatic effect of the rape on her and encourages victims of rape to always speak out. I start seeing guys like all of them are the same. This is what is in their mind. They don't care if you want sex or not. They will just take it whenever they like it. I keep asking myself why it has to happen to me alone even twice. and i feel like i always blame myself for not telling my parents but still for the fact that i did not tell anyone aside from my friends it's it doesn't is no good that you keep quiet if it happens to you you tell somebody like someone that is in position to deal with what happened to bring the person that did it to book report it to please report it maybe if if you're in school report it to the school management and always learn to forgive yourself it's not your fault findings by premium times in over 25 universities and other institutions shows that there are no clear policies against sexual harassment in schools and lack of clarity in university's handbook also makes it difficult for victims to report their cases I'm really not aware of any policy in my school about that. I don't go asking if there's any policy against anything. I just want to be fine. Like that's the only thing I want. He knew, he knew his way. He knew how to maneuver everything. So partly because of that, and also because the university itself is corrupt. The staff is corrupt. Everybody is corrupt. In fact, it was it was I mean, I, I regretted going to that university. Everybody is corrupt. All of them are just, you know, they are just pervert. These victims are often left with depression and feelings of insecurity on campus, and sometimes when they don't drop out of school, they feel important causes. When I came out with a tutu because of a simple person, you know, I wasn't feeling too well about that. You know, I felt like I felt like I wasn't being appreciated. I had my life planned out. So when I didn't get the desired grade, I felt you know, I felt like a failure. I did not sleep with him and he gave me B. 
at the end of the day, I came out with the tutu. I had so many regrets. I don't know. I just had so many regrets about everything. And I just had to put the pain behind me and give life the best it can offer. I don't want to remember everything. Amid this, schools justify the absence of clear policies in their handbooks. Before now, the university had handbooks. And of course, we wouldn't have expected that anything like sexual harassment would come. And be this, and be this prominent now. So, but what we're doing now is to try and slim, say, uh, streamline everything to suit the current reality on the ground. The annoying part of it also is that you find out that in some departments you even have a syndicate of people who do this. So if a student is having an issue with one person, it is not just that one person. And if she tries to report to another person, another of the lecturers, you may even find out that he is part of that syndicate uh, that are perpetrating this crime. So. I don't think it is good and something that not, should be condemned and uh, the perpetrators should also be punished severely or even dismissed from the university. Gender activists said sexual harassment in institutions is likely a replica of what is obtained in the society. Most times what you see is young men, lecturers, you know, whether they are uh, within the system or outside the system or their non-academic staff, you know, taking the privileges that they enjoy outside, the impunity they enjoy, you know, when they violate women and they do not face any consequences, take that feeling, that, that, that confidence into, uh, into the tertiary institutions or into whether it is a polytechnic or university, continuing the violation. We can have uh, gender courses as a general course, you know, that people do from 100 level to say 200 level. We should take the issue of anti-sexual harassment policy that is currently in the National Assembly very seriously. Um, management should be very, very honest about implementing sexual harassment policies that they have in their schools. I think by the time we do some of these, these things and more, we would have a, a safer institutions for young women. Professors and students don't have the same power dynamics, you know, professors hold the power, you know, in this relationship, not just professors, but admin staff as well, that they hold the power in these situations and that something must change. And that includes not just policing, putting policies in place, but it's also about ensuring that when somebody reports, something is actually done. Because I want to be able to say, once you report, something will be done. So we need somebody to hold universities accountable, if it's the university's commission, if it's the governing council, wherever it is, they need to step up and ensure that schools see education just as important as safety and that they could lose if they don't keep their students safe. Beyond implementing policies, they suggest that universities' authorities should organize more symposiums to discuss sexual violence and also introduce a course on sexual assault as a compulsory course for 100 level students. Our reporter met with two former students who dropped out of school because of lecturer's sexual advances. One is from the OK Ogun Polytechnic, Saki, Oyo State, and the other one is from Federal Polytechnic of Aquara State. He used to be um, a lecturer. Then he takes two, I think, close to two or three important courses then, which you, as a student, you must now fail. And the one fateful day, I think I went to submit something, an assignment, or I don't know, I really can't remember. Then he now stopped me, I was talking to him. It was, like, it was like, he likes me, I'm intelligent, he see a very great future in me, that for someone like me to survive in the universe, in the polytechnic as a then, that I need Godfather. And I said, sir, wait, are you trying to say I'll be dating you? He said, yes. I said, ah, sir, no. That if I have someone like him, 
is going to like it's going to help me. I won't I won't have any difficulty in any subject, not in any courses. I won't have any difficulty. As I then I spoke to other ND and the two girls, even guys, they're like, ha, this man, that's how I used to be able. They would tell me is either I accept or I pray. I was advised to go report to the HOD and then when I got there I found that the HOD is the same because I even met him in the position with other students that I wasn't okay. I wrote the exam. I don't even know how I managed to write the exam. But one thing I noticed that when I was looking at checking my results for first semester, most of my results were in good and the result was linked to him. I wasn't supposed to have that kind of result at all. Even someone that didn't attend class would have even passed more than that. It was the most important reason I left the school. While Janet eventually got admission into the Federal University of Technology Oweri, Kafilat, who dropped out of the Federal Polytechnic offer, has refused to go back to school after the traumatic experience she had in 2015. According to Kafilat, a lecturer in the Department of Mass Communication and an examination officer met sexual advances which she refused. The woman who was in her early 20s then said the lecturer gave her a lift on that fateful day but drove into a hotel room demanding sex. Kafilat said although she escaped from the hotel that evening, her action landed her carryovers in two courses including the one handled by the lecturer. Her failure of the two courses, which she traced to the refusal of the sexual advances, made her to quit schooling. Never in Nigeria, if at all I want to continue, she said. We have a unit in place, Safikon unit. The, one of the, uh, let me see, one of the functions of Safikon unit is to go around. Then if any student have complaint on issues on the border on sexual harassment or all other things, they will go there. And the SAFCOM units are always investigating. In fact, they, they act very quickly to investigate when there are cases like that. For student to harass another student is against the rules and the regulation of the I mean, Because if any if any of your friend offends you, it is your duty to report that person to the management. Another thing that management has done as a policy to ensure that the students who are protected is the institution of conference marking. Conference marking means you can teach a course. You can teach a course, but may not be the one to mark. You may put a, you may you may you, you, you may teach a course, but somebody else will mark. Meanwhile, despite the overwhelming rate of sexual harassment in schools. The authorities of three polytechnics approach denied recording any case of sexual harassment in recent years. However, while they claim they have strict measures in place, a review of their handbooks showed no clear-cut policy on sexual harassment in these institutions.